All right. So usually there is an intro video, but I think that one's missing today. I'm not sure if we're on air or not. <laughs> but thank you, everyone, for joining us here on Dojo Live today. This is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. My name is Kim Landis, and I'm really excited about this show because uh, it's a Dojo Live first, I believe, with our guest being from and located in Africa. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce today's guest, who is Mabel Omoni, Omoni, I believe that's right, who is the Chief of Staff at Wakanao.com. Mabel, thank you for being here. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for having me. You're, it's our pleasure. And of course, America Guerrero is here, my confidant, my co-host, um, partner in crime, who helps with these amazing conversations. Hi, Ami. Hello, ladies. Excited. Looking forward to the conversation. I know. And there's something also empowering and exciting about their, um, just being an all-women show as well. But we digress. So what we're talking about today is going to be travel trends and consumer behavior. And we're really going to be looking into answering the questions of what factors are currently influencing travel decision making. But before we dive into that conversation, maybe we'd love to kind of get to know you a bit better. Maybe what's your story, your passion, um, how you got into the world of travel and Waka now? Okay, thanks, Kim. Hi, America. Thank you, everyone. So it's amazing to be here today. Um, what's my story? So first, I would say I started my career um, in the banking sector. I started in the financial industry and um, the journey has led so far. Here I am in a travel company. Um, I currently work with Waka Now. Um, Waka Now is um, it's number one African travel tech company. So when it comes about, when we talk about everything travel, we, we're the, your go-to for everything travel and we what can now does beyond flights. So when you talk about hotels, visa, insurance, everything, you're, yeah, we're a one-stop shop for. It's not every just an OTA, it's everything you need. No, wow. <laughs> everything you need, yes. It's a hub. So we got you covered. Talking about moving from one continent to the other, in terms of straight from the airport, even like securing your tickets to that continent, straight from the airport to your hotel, moving around the city, we got you covered. So yeah. That's, that's who we are. That is amazing and a whole lot to handle. I'm actually <laughs> quite impressed. I'm curious, is most of the, the when we're talking about these travel trends now and the consumer behavior, who are the people using Waka Now? Is it primarily, you know, people from the African continent or is it people from around the globe coming to visit the African continent, a mix of both? So amazingly, it's a mix of both because we currently have over 40 travel centers around the globe. We have um, our travel centers. We have footprints all around the globe. We have offices in the UK, Gambia. We have offices here in Sierra Leone. So we're all over the world. And when you're talking about people who use Wakanao, for, yes, we have people who are traveling out of Africa to other countries. We have people from other countries coming into Africa. So it's a mixture of both. I love it. And I, I have to ask this question as well. The name Waka now. So but the only time I'm familiar with the word Waka is with Shakira's song <laughs> leading up to the World Cup. So what is Waka now? Um, so I would have to ask my pioneer founders, but for us here in Africa, the word Waka now, it's actually um, a Yoruba language. Waka, um, it's, it's not Yoruba, Yoruba is part of it, but Waka now is um, part of you saying, let's go. So that's for that's why for us, the tagline is let's go. So it's like a pidgin, that's, that's a language called pidgin. Uh -huh. It's all really part of the three ethnic um, com um, languages we speak in Nigeria. But that's another part of African language is pidgin. And Waka means like make a move. So huh. when you say Waka now, yeah. So when, when you say Waka now, <laughs> yeah. It's extremely so it resonates. It, yeah, it, so make a move. And also that explains what we do in terms of taking you from one continent to the other, taking you from one location to the other seamlessly at ease. Like we handling everything stress-free for you. Um, 
and right now, currently, it can be from just your mobile phone. It can be mm. from your laptop or for some people who still like to put a face. So that's why we have travel centers. So you can also have um, a location to go to, mostly for people who don't have a direction of what they want to do in terms of consumer uh, behavior. For people who are like, okay, I want to go this to this particular country. I don't have anyone there. I don't have a relative there. I don't have friends there, but I do want to explore the city. So what we do, we have consultation services for people that fall in that bucket where we can advise them and say, okay, you know what? These are the um, packages we can curate for you. These are the activities. These are the experiences we can make you um, go through or make you experience when you go to this continent. And all you have to do is just, um, we work with your budget and things like that. So when we delve into the, the, the topic for today, I'll talk more about how we we make travel easy for everyone because in, in time past, travel used to be for some select people. It used to be for the elites. It, it used to be or for business. people who can, yeah, or business, yeah. But the trend, the trend this period is, is, is towards making it um, achieve, accessible to everyone. And that's why we're here. We're rightly positioned for the consumers, the shifting changes we're seeing, consumers' behavior and all of that. Yeah, it's super interesting. And I love that you still, there's this boutique style, the old school mixed with the new school. Yes, cool. Because it actually came up not too long ago on, a, 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 I think maybe even our last two shows ago on Dojo okay. Live when we were wrapping up our series with ProVision. And uh, Martin Chevalet, who is the CEO of Inspire, was talking about how we're talking about incorporating AI, right? But he was like, but we still have to figure out the, on the operational side is where this gets harder because there's still many people. And I think he even said many. my parents, for example, <laughs> who yeah. aren't going to be you know, wanting to use an app to order their drink off of the beach. They're going to want to have a waiter come up. So it's a really beautiful example here still of how we need to be able to merge those two worlds. Yes. But let's talk about these travel trends that you are seeing. Um, what's going on? Amazing, Kim. So I can tell you for, for a fact. So travel trend right now is, is dynamic. It's changing. It's not static. And for us as a travel company, as a travel um, in the travel industry, it's important for us to make to, to take note of these changes and as well position our product and services to, to consumers based on these changes that we're seeing. Do you understand? So right now, travel trends. Uh, so before it used to be, oh, I just want to go to this place, knock it off my bucket list and all of that. But now there's more of an experience people want to experience. So they're not going to places because it's popular. And then at the end of the day, it's overcrowded and all of that. They're going to places mostly for the experience to immerse themselves in the experience and say, okay, if I'm traveling to this particular place, if it's not work, if, it, if it's vacation, for instance, I want to experience the culture. I want to experience the ambience. I want to go around and not just go to a particular place and knock it off my bucket list. So it's more of inserting yourself in the current um in, in, in whatever location you want to go to. And people are also traveling based on sustainability. They're traveling based on safety. How safe is this place? They're not going to a place. So those, those are the trends we're seeing right now. Is it safe to travel to country? this country? Is it safe to travel to that country? So those are part of the considerations people are looking at right now in picking destinations when they say they want to travel. It's really interesting. I think it really aligns a lot with what we've been seeing on the show lately as well. I mean, first up comes to mind um, the company Mount. What they do is actually offer the hosts of short-term rentals, Airbnb, Airbnbs and awesome. such, to offer experiences to their guests, right? Because who's going to know the experiences that are happening locally better than a local host, right? The local, and then we, also, yeah. we also had conversations with Turnio, who does something really similar, but they're with um, hotels, which are also a way to book experience directly through the hotels. And then not too long okay. ago, we had Tuzmo as well. And their whole idea is to focus around local artisans and to be awesome. able to connect travelers awesome. with those artisans and not just for the purchasing component, but also the experience component, right? Of how experiencing and seeing how things are made and just really having okay. a story. Story, amazing. When we come, when we come home. I'm, I'm curious, is this generational that you're seeing, this, this shift toward the, the experience, the um, sustainability piece you also mentioned, um, or is this kind of what you're seeing all across the board, regardless of age or geography? 
Um, so we, in terms of age geography, yeah, we're seeing some changes um, and it's to some select people like to the Gen Z, they have a different, they have a different mission or different reason or, or when they make their decision to watch travels, it's a different ball game mentality. Some of them are mostly influenced by social media. When they see influencers go to a particular place, they're like, oh, I'm going to that place. Oh, I need to go to that place. For, but for some other generation, um, um, other categories of people, it's more of maybe something for some people travel for pilgrimage, for religion and all of that. So it's a mixture of, it's not a particular, based on the different ages and genders of people. So travel, the trend is mixing and moving around that, that um, fact. Wow. Something that I experienced, I, two months ago, I traveled to another country. And something that I experienced while searching uh, flights, for example, in an OTA, is that I wasn't uh, familiar with the airlines that I wanted okay. to buy the tickets. So I'm from Mexico. I'm, I have okay. no idea what kind of airlines are in Nigeria, for example. And I needed to do some research to see some comments from other users. Yeah. This airline, I wouldn't recommend it. That kind of information takes time. Do you yeah. make like a consultation in, 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 a, in working out in the website or any type, any type of, I don't know, like um, uh, the description of the airline or how would you help uh, these users to make that easier? Okay, so nice question, America. So in terms of work now, we have um, consultation team right from our visa team. So we have a team that first for for people who haven't even traveled, like in your case, for instance, you don't even know the airlines are available in Nigeria. You want someone to guide you through and advise you on the best option to go for. So we have teams, um, we have um, set up a, a team of people who are there to advise you. And for countries outside Africa, for instance, we have partnership with some of those countries. Um, recently, our team went to Morocco. So what we also do is when we visit these other continents, we create contents from there and we put them up on our social media platform. We're on Instagram, Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, all of those platform. We put out the experiences and then we... The thing is, when people buy tickets from us they, and they go to these specific locations, they also come back sharing their experience and say, oh, thank you, Waka, now we had a great time here. Considering for customers that would have to take care of every all of their um, package in terms of we, we've got them their travel, we got them their visa, we, we secured their hotels, we took them right from the airport. So because we have like a hub of of products that we can offer. So sometimes some people just come to us and say, oh, you know what? I want to go to this country. Um, I have, we're a family of five or we're a family of four. What do you advise? So we take them through and say, okay, these are the activities you can do because we have um, partnerships with some DMCs as well. And so we just advise you on, so for some people it's based on budgets. It's based on, oh, this is how much my budget is for this travel, for this trip. And then we work within their budget. For some people, they are not, they are open to spend as much as, so it's based on your preference. So we create, yes, there's a team that would, you can speak with to consult. Um, and, and wonderful for us here at Waka now, our services run two for seven. So take for instance, yeah, <laughs> amazing, I know. Take for instance, the country where you're in, you're just starting your day for us, we're winding down. But when we wind down in at the office, we don't wind down in terms of our businesses because we have a team of, of, of um, um, a set of people who are on standby to advise you. You want to get your ticket, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., we're here round the clock serving our customers, yeah. Wow, you know, and I think that's a really interesting point that you make in order to fit with the needs of your users, of those guests. Um, what other types of, you know, this I think is quite unique. You know, we're gonna have a 24 hour hands-on, not just, you know, a, a chat bot or something of that sort, but yeah. 24 hours availability from wherever you are in the globe to make the proper arrangements. What other yeah. sort of innovative approaches has Walkin' Out taken um, in your terms of being this sort of one stop shop how do you manage doing it all <laughs> amazing we have taken advantage of technology 
um, knowing that for some people, they just want to get on your platform and do everything themselves. So we have a user-friendly kind of platform, be it the mobile app, if you're opting for the mobile app or you want to go to the website, um, we have a user-friendly website for you to use. It's easy for you to navigate around, even if you don't want to call us, um, despite that we run our services 247. So we have, um, yes, we have that future. And also another amazing thing is, like I said earlier, on our Instagram pages, you can run through our pages to see these locations. We have created contents from these locations for you to have an overview beforehand, before you get to those places. And some, 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 some period um, we had also virtual experiences. You don't necessarily have to go there to, to have a feel. By just putting on the virtual device, you can see what that place looks like. Yeah, we had um, some program and we had to show people. So it was uh, like a VR that they had to put on. Yes. So it gives you an overview of what that place looks like so that you know that, oh, even when you get there, this is what it's going to look like. So it also helps inform the consumer's decision or the customer's decision in this case of, oh, amazing, I want to do this, I want to go here and all of that. So we've taken advantage of technologies. Our payment platform is amazing. It's wonderful. This for, for the payment, um, there's security on our pages. So you're not, because people have the notion that, oh, once my details are out there on this on this platform, I'm not, I don't trust it and all of that. We have full secure, we have partnered with the best payment um, systems here in Nigeria. And amazingly for us as well, for people, you know, earlier I said before, travel used to be for some select few. So if you want to travel and you're like, oh, I don't have all my funds right now, I don't have all the money I need for this trip. We have a package called the Pay Small Small on our platforms. It helps you um, spread your payments. So you, depending on what you want. So you can then buy your flights considering how we know that um, the cost of flights um, isn't fixed, the fares aren't fixed and you want to secure a particular price for, or you want to get your ticket now for a trip in the future. So you can begin to pay towards that trip. So we have that payment package on our platform as well. So we have taken advantage of technology a lot and we have positioned it right in the midst of our product and services to 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 meet um the travel needs of our cons of our consumers and our customers i love this feeling that you give to your users that is not an ota yeah. a stop shop like yeah Kimsa. it is it, yeah. it is your friend in when you're traveling and yeah. i meant i remember that you mentioned that there is also an insurance element that you yes. offer what is that about yes. So the insurance element we offer for the package is um, you can opt in, you can opt out, but it's safe to opt in. Um, in terms of the flights, so you want to secure your flights and you want to also secure your baggages. So when you um, on the platform, on the website, so there's the product called Travel Extras. If you want to get your flight, take for instance, you're going to a country, you don't know anyone, like I said earlier, and you want us, you want Wakanda to handle everything for you. We'll take care of your or once you get your once you secure your flight tickets, you can opt in for insurance against your your ticket in case there's um maybe a day change or anything. It secures you. You don't have to pay for that. And then for your baggage, if you have a baggage loss or something, that insurance covers you. In terms of you want us to get your baggage checked in, checked you check gets you checked in even before you get to the airport. Yes, we offer that service as well. So it's called protocol. Someone would get your passport, get your details, and once you get your your flight details, once you get to the airport, they recognize you. We have means for us. Um, we've created steps so that we're also identifying the right person. So we have your a picture of you, a picture of your baggage as well. We get you checked in. Um, if you want us to take care of your rights as well, we'll get you sorted in terms of that. There's someone waiting with your name, and we'll usher you in. So. It's like I said, it's a one-stop shop where you just feel, I just need to come to this website. I just need to come to this company, tell them my travel dates, get my visa. And we have a team, a wonderful team um, that would advise you get all your documentation, look through your documents, ensure that you're not getting a no from the consular, even though we have no control over that. But what we do, what our visa team does is we ensure that you're filling in the right details, you're getting your documents all, all prepared properly so that when you do apply, you don't get a refusal. Yeah, so. 
I'm curious in terms of documentation, this other travel trend, it's actually quite new to me. I, in terms of, I haven't had to use it in a while <laughs> and securing visas and the passports and everything like that. Like how has technology played a role there? Let's even just say over the past 10 to 20 years. Um, I remember 20 years ago, I got to travel to uh, Africa, not to Nigeria, but to Kenya. Yeah. Um, but it was still a very manual process. We we had to mail in our passports in order to secure visas and different things. What does that look like now? So we still have the physical mail through your mail, mail sending your requirements um, via email. But for some countries, all you have to do is just email it to them. Um, and that's why we have our team. They will advise you on on what to do. Sorry, the light is back. Okay, so they will advise you on the documents you need to send in to them. What we do here at Waka now, we'd like to, for, for visa applications, for instance, would get you to come in for people who can, for people who can't, we'll just have a session, a virtual session, um, and then we'll talk you through the process. So in terms of what technology has done for in, in that part of documentation, some um, visa appointments, you don't even have to go, you don't have to um, come to us. We'll just tell you the documents, we'll preview those documents before you submit them. So there are channels where you can just submit those documents here and then you get feedback, you get notifications and all on in, pro in terms of the progress of the application. Mm. Easy peasy. So I wanted to kind of get back to this idea of the decision making process. And you spoke already to, you know, just the ease of the walk on our site and how you walk your users sort of through that journey. But what shifts have you seen in the decision making, maybe leaning back again to the experience side or what might other, you know, um, travel, hospitality, businesses um, take into consideration what are these decision making let's say um touch points that you've seen are becoming more least important less and less important and then the ones that are becoming more you know more important. and more important okay so in terms of decision making one major major factor is your budgets how much are you have you put aside for travel how much are you willing to stretch you know how sometimes you budget, um, let's say, $500, but because of inflation, because of the cost of things, obviously, things have gone higher than expected. How much can you stretch? So the budget plays a very, very important factor when it comes to decision making in terms of travel. Your budget is very, very important. So some people have flexible budgets. And amazingly for us, we work with your budgets. So even though you might not be able to cover everything, but you do have, you yes, you would be able to achieve to a reasonable extent some of your travel desires that you have um, outlined for yourself. Another thing that affects the decision making in terms of travel is your preference, your purpose of travel. Let's, let's, let me go to your purpose of travel. Some people are traveling for work. Some people are traveling for, for maybe that's a, a conference they have to attend and that's work related. Some people are traveling for wellness. Some people just want to uh, experience a new environment. Some people want to just um, have a feel of the culture in a particular place. So the purpose of travel also influences the decision when it comes to what, what are you traveling for and all of that. Another thing that we're seeing um, that has a very strong hold when it comes to travel, it's uh, social media, your influencers, and all or whatnot, and you're like, oh, I need to go to that place. Oh, I want to experience this because social media has played a very huge and important role in terms of travel, in terms of how consumers will even behave because it also influences their decision. So um, influencers have, when they come up, when they go to locations or they create content and then they put it up on their Instagram or their Facebook and you see this. So that also influences um, decision-making when it comes to travel. Another thing that I've, um, that influences travel is seasonality, the time. Um, for us now, Nigeria, pretty much we have um, like raining season and um, dry season. But in other countries, they have different seasonalities. And also, and some people are like, oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the UK when it's cold because I can't stand it. So the seasonalities also, they want to go only when 
like it's when they can have move around and all of that. So the season also plays an important role when it comes to travel and the culture. Another thing is the culture. They want to go to a particular place and you're like, okay, what's the culture of this place? I want to immerse myself in the culture of this place. I want to experience. They're traveling for experience and not just knocking it off their bucket list. They want to go there and, and have memories and say, oh, while I was growing up and all of that, same way you traveled to, um, was it Kenya or Congo you talked about much earlier? Yeah. So you want to, yeah, you want to experience what the culture is like. And, and feel and say, okay, this is why they do these things. Because you obviously will not sit afar off and understand why some people, um, some cultures are the way they are. Until you go there, visit there, mm -hmm. and then you experience it here and see that, okay, truly, this is why they do things this way. And, and we all have diverse cultures. We have various cultures across the globe. Yeah, it's interesting your stories because I see how these all sort of fit together. Like, I imagine, you know, I'm going to choose an influencer so that I'm going to follow who's more in line with my own values, my own interests, which then yeah. aligns probably with my budget and the cultures and the places that I'm in. It's sort of, I don't know if it's this chicken and the egg sort of cycle, right? And it yeah. makes me think of packaging and packages. So does Waka now offer these types of packages or how do you present these stories or these experiences or even help people make decisions that they weren't even sure that they were asking to make? Yes, we do make packages. Um, we, we have a team, they're called the Holidays Team. We create packages for a group of people, regardless of the numbers. So you're traveling for, so in terms of packages, here's how it works. A group of people will come together and say, okay, we're trying to go to this destination. We want to achieve this. And they're all like minds. And then we say, okay, fantastic. We got you covered. We take care of everything. So for, for the packages, how that works as well is in terms of the hotels, in terms of the locations, the activities, like I said much earlier, we have partnerships with some DMCs. We have partnership with um, the hotels in those countries as well. So we just say, okay, just relax, sit down. These are the things you can do. And when it comes to a group of people, like I said earlier, they're like-minded, maybe they're going for a function, they're going for an event or whatever the, the occasion is, or they just want to have a good time. Our holidays team, have we have curated packages for different locations. If you say you want to go to Egypt or Morocco for two days or three days, we'll give you the cost. So, and that's how much he works with your budget and say, okay, these are, this is how much it will cost you to go to this place. If you want to experience, we have um, various activities they can um, go through or experience while they're in those places. We give them the cost as well. So that helps them inform their decisions to say, okay, yeah, we want to go to this place. We want to do this, this, this. So all of that is curated in their cost and then presented to the team. So we have a group that handles that, definitely. That's amazing. Something that I recently read, I don't remember which OTA, I don't remember how tech works exactly, but now you, it is possible that if you're going to stay in a hotel and you're having some trouble, for example, finding the paper in the restroom or I don't know, you saw something that is not clean, instead of con uh, contacting the hotel directly and fix that, you will like to choose the OTA where you book your uh, the hotel, hotel. And, uh -huh, and try to connect with them so everything can be fixed instead of connecting with the hotel. So there is this like trust with the OTA instead of with the hotels. Is this something that you also experience at working out with the partnerships that you have with technology? How is that changing? So in terms of the trust people have in us, Yes, there's that trust. And like you rightly said, we've had various scenarios where they would rather come back to us than the hotel to say, oh, I'm having these challenges. And the good thing about everyone that works here at Waka now, we're reachable. We are very reachable and accessible, yes. So we're not just, you know how you buy your ticket from an airline and you're tr you have a problem with your ticket and you're trying to make some changes and you're calling their call center or their customer line and you can't reach anyone. The good thing here is for everyone handling your package, for everyone <laughs> handling your, your travel. I'm really report. laughing because I'm like, I'm sorry, <laughs> did you say yes? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yes. Half the time I just find myself hitting like zero, 
zero, zero. <laughs> Please, God, connect me. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't have that worries with Waka now. You don't have that worries at all. Trust me with Waka now. We're reachable and we, because for us, customer is everything. So we ensure and we have come to realize that if we serve one customer very well, that customer is your working advert. That one customer would go around and talk about your brand, your product to as many people, to 10 people, 10 people to another 10 people. So imagine the geometrical progression that will be. So that's like you have a physical marketing strategy in place. So for us at Waka now, we know the customer is everything. So we don't just take your money and say, okay, bring your money, go buy. No, we don't do that. So yeah, we've had so many scenarios, so many cases whereby people want to, they, they're, they're not in the country, and but they bought their products or their all or their flights, everything from us, and then we handle it. Or they have any issues, and then they reach out to us and we're on top of it. And because of the partnership we have with some of these DMCs, it's easy, it's very easy for us to just spring into action and then make all the changes or all corrections they need. Because we believe in serving our customers and making them happy. So that has that has helped the brand build trust. And then we see a lot of people there. So we get a lot of referrals, trust me. We get a lot of referrals. People are saying, oh, go to Waka now. They will handle everything for you. You don't know where to go to, just go to Waka now. So that's, that's what we get to experience as a result of how we handle our customers. So in terms of how technology is, is helping us in, to, in, in this regard, we, for us, we're not restricted to just our emails and all of that. We, you can, we can right now, Kim, if you want to reach me on, on a call, I'll share my number with you. You can reach me on WhatsApp, yeah. So you can, we take advantage of technology, like I said, and we don't just take your money and go to sleep and, and then you're in discomfort. We ensure that even before you get there, before you get to your destination, everything is covered. So we're taking also, yeah, we have customer service. Good. The good thing I forgot to mention is, our customer service is also on social media. So if you're thinking, oh, you can reach us on the call center, and amazingly, we have a future on our mobile app where you can call us for free on the mobile via the mobile app. So you can reach any of our call of our travel center agents, any of our call center agents via the mobile app. Yeah. So we're on social media. There's someone hands-on. We have a live chat. We run 247. We make we position ourselves rightly to serve our customers, knowing that there are time differences in different zones, and we have people who are moving from one continent to the other. So we have taken advantage of all of this to ensure that our customers have great experiences when they come shop from Wakanao for their travels. Hmm. I love it. I think there's this beautiful sort of pendulum that happens, you know, as as we push toward technology, and it's not going away. But I think what I'm hearing and seeing is that there was this shift for, you know, all things being very personable, very manual. And then it yeah. swung over here to being so yeah. technically oriented that we forgot to put the human in the hospitality, right? Yeah. And now yeah. we're coming back to this back. happy middle. And I think Waka now, from what I can hear, is very much at the forefront of doing that. So, Mabel, thank you so much for sharing the Waka now story. Um, thank you. What you do for your users. Of course, I love this idea of people first, making everything extremely accessible. And, of course, paying attention to what they're looking for in their decision making and then helping make that decisions making easy for them by Make presenting them with the information that they require. Thank you so much. And um, we wish you and your team nothing but success. Kim, don't forget that conversation. You're coming to Nigeria, yeah? America, I, you too. I will I will make it happen as to the best of my ability. I'll go on to Waka now and um, awesome. check it out. <laughs> Perfect. You know, um, stick around here, Mabel, as we go off air. But before we do, I'd like to let our users know that we will be off air completely all of next week because, you know, we got to take vacations too. Unfortunately, not to Nigeria this go around. <laughs> but we will go off air all of next week. But we'll be back um, for our next show that's going to be um, on April 3rd. We're going to be speaking with Trevor Haynes of Lodge Link. So do check that, that out on Wednesday, April 3rd, 10 o'clock Pacific as always. And of course, if you really, really do miss us, you can check all of these great shows at dojo.live and uh, check it out. All right. So we'll see you then. Mabel, once again, thank you so much.
And thank you, Kim. Thank you, America, for having me. Thank you so much. That's right. Bye for now.